Hi, I'm Jeremy Horst. And I'm Eleni Alamikiotis. And we're representing the University of California, San Francisco, Carey's Arrest Committee. This committee was put together to evaluate the use of silvers for stopping carries. Silver nitrate and silver diamine fluoride have been used increasingly in the United States in dentistry. And so we put together a committee that included the dean of the school, department chairs, professors, educators, clinicians, a student, a resident, and we evaluated the clinical evidence and all of the literature to put together a guideline and a protocol of how to use these silvers, and in particular we chose silver diamine fluoride to move forward with for use in dental caries. Also, we're issuing a recommendation to use this material off-label for caries. We'll talk about the details of that more in a minute. So the orientation of this presentation is that we're going to go through a couple of cases where we use these materials, and then we'll talk about what this material is, the history, where it came from, how we got to use it now, and then we'll go through the clinical evidence and scientific evidence of the mechanisms of silver diamine fluoride and how well it works. And then we'll go through our guidelines and protocol and talk about how this interacts with other aspects of dentistry. We have no financial interest to any product that we're discussing here. Now to start off with our clinical cases, this first one was a kiddo that I saw starting when he was about four years old. He had already been through general anesthesia for treatment a year before. He had 12 lesions, which were treated with four stainless steel crowns and eight composite restorations. When I met him a year later, all of the composite restorations had failed due to recurrent caries. The stainless steel crowns were intact, but he had nine new lesions besides that. So when he was about three, he had 12 lesions. When he was about four, he had 17 lesions. Now it turns out this kiddo was pretty medically fragile. He has a seizure disorder, he's also a hemophiliac, and he also has a number of internal anatomic abnormalities, including his gastrointestinal system. When I told mom that just like a year before, we were gonna bring him into general anesthesia and do dental treatment, she said, no way. It turns out that a month prior, he had almost died in general anesthesia due to the general anesthesia and not due to the surgical procedure that he had. I verified that with the pediatric anesthesiologist and she told me you gotta find out another way. Thankfully, a silver nitrate and fluoride varnish protocol had just been published that gave the idea of using silver nitrate, which has been around forever and was grandfathered into the FDA, and fluoride varnish, which we've been using for decades, to simulate silver diamine fluoride to arrest his caries lesions. So we started doing that and we treated every three months. And after a year and a half, there was only one out of those 17 lesions that had kept growing. That was exciting. That one lesion was growing, so we treated it using something called the Hall Technique. Hall Technique crowns on all of his upper primary molars and never needed to do anything else for the other lesions. As you can see, the lesions turned black. They turned jet black and the healthy part of the tooth stayed white. And so I just saw him actually the other day. And so this is over three years later, you can see the Kerry's lesions completely disappeared on a number of places because of his severe attrition. So he still, to this point, three years later, has never had a new lesion. When he was three, he had 12. When he was four, he had 17. And for the next three years thereafter, after I started treating with silver, he never got a new lesion. I did have to treat one of the teeth and I decided to treat some of the others because I was already treating this one. But he was able to exfoliate in a number of these teeth already naturally without needing any further treatment. This case tells us a number of things that we feel are relevant to this discussion. One, the cavities are gonna turn black. Two, it stops most, but not every single cavity. And three, it has this indirect preventive effect of preventing caries on surfaces that we don't even treat. And that last part is the reason that I think we're the most excited about this. What we typically see with kids going into general anesthesia and older adults and whomever going into general anesthesia where everything gets taken care of at once is that 70% of those folks get a new cavity within the next year. Well here, what we'll show you is that only 30% of kids get a new cavity in the next couple years thereafter with silver diamine fluoride treatment. So this is a case study completed by Dr. Chu and their group in Hong Kong who have completed the majority of the randomized control trials on silver diamine fluoride. This is a 14 year old boy with beta thalassemia major suffering from chronic graft versus host disease referred to their dental clinic who presented with significant tooth sensitivity and rampant caries. He had difficulty eating or drinking anything cold and could only brush minimally if at all. 
So they put together a treatment plan that aimed to establish oral health, mastication, anesthetics, um, extensive oral hygiene counseling was completed, nutrition counseling was completed, and three applications of silver dimine fluoride were completed as well. After plaque removal, at time zero, two weeks after that, and four weeks after the last application. Root canal treatment was completed as well on all non-vital teeth that they had tested at the initial exam. After treatment with SDF, all of the lesions are rested, and probably also just as noticeably, all his sensitivity with his teeth had gone away. So he could now eat or drink anything cold without concern or discomfort. They were able to place provisional restorations anteriorly for aesthetics and posteriorly to protect his root canal treated teeth and establish occlusion. This is one example of directly treating the bacterial disease that is dental caries with silver dimine fluoride uh, and restoratively albeit provisionally via a traditional means. So this is a 95 year old woman who presented to our dental clinic with the chief complaint of some pain and discomfort on brushing. On exam, we noted that she had multiple root carious lesions. Um, she also wore an existing upper complete denture and lower partial denture. After our discussing risk benefits alternatives to treatment options, she elected to move forward with silver dimine fluoride treatment and we completed three applications one week apart. Her lesions not only arrested, but her symptoms subsided. We continue to monitor these lesions and this is particularly important for her given that she has a decreased salivary flow and the fact that her lesions are root lesions. Um, in our clinical experience, these two factors can tend to contribute to a lower rate of arrest. Also of note, her gums are healthy and she has mild plaque and very mild inflammation when considering her daily use of her removable partial denture and the fact that she had not had a cleaning in a few months. We've noticed clinically that silver dimine fluoride has slowed plaque accumulation and reduced gingival inflammation as well. So silver dimine fluoride, what is it? It is a colorless liquid that is 25% silver that acts as an antimicrobial. It's 8% ammonia that acts as a solvent to stabilize high concentrations of silver and fluoride in solution and it is 5% fluoride that acts to remineralize the tooth. So as we've just reviewed and to review again, what silver diamine fluoride does is that it can arrest dental caries, prevent dental caries directly and indirectly. And when we say indirectly, we mean that application to carious lesions only can prevent cavities in other teeth and it can decrease dentin hypersensitivity. So where'd this come from? Silver nitrate has been used around the world for over a thousand years. It's been known nearly as long as human culture has been around that silver is antimicrobial. So the founding fathers and mothers of dentistry each had their own protocols for using silver nitrate to arrest dental caries. We found the oldest study we can find went back as far as 1891 and over half of treated lesions were arrested. Silver fluoride has been used in Japan for over 900 years and it was used in, in geishas and married women that they would put this on every day for months and intentionally blacken their teeth. And it was known that these women did not get any cavities. So ammonia was added somewhere around the 1960s and at least since the late 60s has been monitored by the Japanese government by their correlate of the FDA. And so that made silver diamine fluoride, whereas what was available before was silver fluoride without the ammonia. So the ammonia makes silver diamine, which appears to be much more stable and therefore much more safe. So this has been available since the 1980s or before in Australia, Brazil, Argentina, Cuba, China, and of course in Japan. And now it's available here in the United States. In 2014, the United States FDA cleared silver diamine fluoride as a cavity varnish for treating hypersensitivity. 
In 2015, it became available. And in 2016, there was a CDT code released that went active in January for Kerry's arrest. So prior to this, we didn't have a code for monitoring and therefore getting reimbursed for Kerry's arrest. And so that's D1354. Now it's very important to us that anyone that follows our recommendation of using silver diamine fluoride to treat dental caries understands that this is an off-label use. This is exactly the same as any other fluoride treatment, like fluoride varnish. That fluoride varnish is cleared by the FDA as a hypersensitivity varnish to treat sensitive teeth, but we use it to prevent caries. So this is the same. We're using it to prevent and to treat caries, even though the FDA has cleared it uh, for hypersensitivity. Now this is totally legal, and we feel that any clinician uh, that's going to use this in this way should understand, just like we understand that we use fluoride varnish off-label. I think it's fun to note that as far as we've been able to tell, this is the first time that a community clinic has gotten a device through the FDA. So it was actually a professor, Peter Milgram, who's at the dental school up in University of Washington and also is in public health, and a large community clinic in Oregon called Advantage Dental, thus Advantage Arrest, that really got this through the FDA. And so that kind of shows you that it's available for the right reasons. And lastly, the company that's distributing it and making it is Elevate. Those are the same folks who were Omni before and brought Vanish, which is the most popular fluoride varnish in the country. Uh, they brought Vanish to market uh, as Omni. So don't be scared. We're about to walk through a bunch of data. Uh, we're going to carefully show you what we think matters. And we invite you to look at the data yourself and come to your own conclusions. In particular, we used um, all of the clinical trial data, so the clinical evidence about this material, to inform our protocol and guidelines. We invite you to make your own conclusions, and so we're going to walk you through. So what you see here is on the horizontal axis uh, is time. So we lined up all of the clinical trial data across time in the same way here. So it goes out to three years, and each of these sets of bars is at six-month intervals. And so for each panel, that's a different clinical trial. Each color is a different condition in the trial. And so if you don't see a bar at all, uh, that means 0%. That means that none of the cavities were stopped. Uh, and if the bar goes all the way up to the top, that means 100% of the cavities were stopped. And what you see is that none of the bars are at the bottom and none of the bars are at the top. So this is a medicine, and most medicines are not 100%. And it does seem to work. So we've oriented the studies from top to bottom uh, in frequency of silver diamine fluoride. So the red is silver diamine fluoride placed twice per year. The black is once per year, and that blue down in the second from the bottom is only placed once. And so just looking at the difference in frequencies with these three studies, you can see up at the top the difference between the red and the black. The red is a little bit higher. So the more frequently you put silver diamine fluoride on, the more effective it is at stopping cavities. We see a big jump between 12 and 18 months, which we're still kind of scratching our heads about. And then down to the second from the bottom, you see if you only put it on once, you get the same initial effect at six months. About 40 to 50% of the cavities are stopped. But if you don't keep putting it on, that effect goes away with time. And so you see at the two year mark that basically all the cavities have started back up again. So based on these data and the rest of the clinical trials here, uh, we've been suggesting that it's extremely important to keep applying silver diamine fluoride uh, to the lesions to not only keep them arrested, but continue arresting more and more um, of the lesions. Now, in the second from top and third from top studies, again, just to reemphasize the point, some of the lesions that do not appear arrested at six months or a year will be arrested at 18 months or 24 months. So this demands a level of patience that we've never really had to deal with before in dentistry, and is interesting. The fourth from the top, the Chu et al. 2002 study, uh, the black and orange, that's with or without excavating the lesion uh, with a spoon excavator. And so what we see is that there's no difference in a rest rate whether or not we scoop the cavity out or not. So we just use the toothbrush to clean the lesion, remove the plaque on top of the lesion, but we don't excavate at all, and we treat with silver diamine fluoride. Some of these other studies will uh, employ fluoride varnish, and this outperforms fluoride varnish many times a year, two to four times per year, um, or a glass item or cement. And for arresting caries, it seems, at least in these studies, to outperform glass item or cement. Uh, there's also different concentrations of silver diamine fluoride shown in these studies. They've made it simple for us by only clearing the most highly concentrated version of silver diamine fluoride, which is the 38%. As you can see, the 12% doesn't seem to work quite as well, and the 30% is more variable. So, 
onto caries prevention, and you'll notice these are just in children. The last one was just in children, and as is this one. We'll show you the older adult slides next. These four studies were done in kids and had a no treatment or placebo control. Same orientation of timeline from zero to three years, but what this means is that uh, if you don't see a bar, then the treatment group would have as many cavities as the placebo group. And if the bar goes all the way up to 100%, that would mean that there's no cavities whatsoever in whatever the timeline is for the treatment group. And again, unfortunately, it's not 100%. But what's exciting is that in these two studies, just by treating lesions only, so only by applying silver diamine fluoride to cavities twice or once per year, we're preventing cavities in untreated surfaces out to two and a half and three years, which reaches around 70%. That's the indirect prevention that we're talking about, that we're so excited about. And then in terms of direct prevention, compared to resin sealant, glass ionomer sealant, uh, we're getting similar performance as long as we repeat at least once per year. So you can see the study at the bottom. Our interpretation of that is that they didn't repeat at a year, and perhaps it would have been different, maybe not as effective as the glass ionomer cement sealant, but that would have been a higher uh, prevention rate had it been higher. Now we don't know that for sure, and we're focusing on using this at least once a year to get the best results or more frequently. Now for older adults, we have two studies on prevention and two studies on arrest, where the orange, black, and white study is actually the same study. What I think you'll notice immediately is that there's a very different result between the top and bottom studies in both arrest and prevention. We're all still scratching our heads about this, but certainly in some populations, it works very well to arrest in older adults for root caries and in some populations it works very well to prevent caries directly by applying it to non-carious root surfaces. And in some populations, at least the study population here, it worked better than the other things that we have, but only about 35% of the lesions were arrested and only about 25% of the lesions were prevented in this study. I say we're scratching our head because all of these studies were actually done by the same research group at University of Hong Kong. When we compare directly the second from bottom study, if you apply silver diamine fluoride to root surfaces once per year, that did better in preventing than fluoride varnish or chlorhexidine varnish four times per year. And that effect seems to go away with time, that those catch up. But compared to a placebo control, these are all achieving 50 to 70% prevention after three years. So in summary, we have 12 randomized controlled trials with over 1,800 patients in the silver diamine fluoride treatment groups with no adverse outcomes, which suggests that this is very safe. Nine were on caries arrest, and six were on caries prevention, with three overlapping. And we're getting about 90% arrest with twice per year application, and lower rates about 40 to 80% with once per year application. So based on that, we would say, why not apply twice per year, or if the caries are severe, and the risk of caries is severe, perhaps more frequently. And for caries prevention, just by applying to the lesions, we're getting dramatic effects. In high-risk patients, on high-risk surfaces, it seems to make sense to apply silver diamine fluoride for prevention as well. And so we're happy to announce that actually the first study of silver diamine fluoride in the United States uh, was recently completed. And this was led by University of Washington and uh, the Advantage Dental Group in Oregon. And I got to participate myself a little bit. And so this was mainly a safety study. We just looked after two weeks in three to five year old children at uh, three different sites. There were 66 kids enrolled total, which is a relatively small study, and we were able to see dramatic results in caries arrest after two weeks. So 72% of the lesions in the treatment group were arrested at two weeks versus 5% in the placebo control group. The main reason for the study was really to monitor for safety. And so uh, we called the parents of these kiddos 24 to 48 hours later, and then again saw them ourselves in two weeks to assess for any adverse outcomes. And what we found is that the outcomes were the same between the placebo group and the silver diamine fluoride group. Four kids in each group had noted adverse events. Diarrhea was in two of the placebo group. Flu and nausea was in two of the silver diamine fluoride group, which were not attributable to silver diamine fluoride. There was a spot that was noticed on the side of the lip of one of the kids in the treatment group that was flat, didn't hurt at all, and kind of looked like a burn, but didn't hurt, which we would attribute to the silver getting on the skin and by the time uh, we saw them two weeks later that it disappeared. So this is going to be submitted to the FDA in an attempt to get this material approved as a drug for children for caries arrest. So we are now going to review the mechanism of action for which this works. We know that dental caries is a bacterial disease. The bacteria metabolize the sugar that we eat and 
essentially begin the process of degrading the tooth. So the silver ion itself is a wrecking ball of sorts. It's a potent antimicrobial that denatures all proteins, breaks cell walls, and inhibits DNA replication. So specifically, it also acts to denature the proteins that break down the dentin, like MMPs and collagenases. And you're probably all familiar with fluoride that works to promote remineralization, inhibit demineralization, and can inhibit plaque bacteria. And so the exciting thing about silver diamine fluoride is the sustantivity, is that it goes into the lesion and seems to stay there. We have a lot of different antimicrobials, and the problem is always how long is it going to stay there and keep being effective. Last year, there was an article published in Nature that we found very amusing, which said that silver ions have a zombie effect of killing bacteria. And what they did is they took some bacteria and killed them with typical antibiotics, amoxicillin, and then rinsed the bacteria, rinsed the bacteria, rinsed the bacteria, and put them in with living bacteria, and the living bacteria didn't care. Now they took silver nitrate, so silver ions, and killed bacteria with it, rinsed, 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 and then added that to living bacteria, and it killed all of the living bacteria. So the dead ones are coming back to kill the living ones, and thus zombies. So the idea is that the silver stays with the dead bacteria, but then when it's exposed to other bacterial's metabolites, the silver releases from the dead bacteria and then goes to kill uh, the living ones. And so it seems that that's the same thing that happens in the tooth, is that the more demineralized a lesion is, the more silver soaks into the lesion. And when new bacteria try to come in and reinvade that cavity, it seems to reactivate and kill them. That also seems to explain why it works, but needs to be repeated, is that the silver seems to release slowly with time, and so we kind of need to reactivate the lesion by putting it on at some point thereafter. Painting silver diamine fluoride onto dentin also helps resist acid attack in a way that seems more profound than normal fluorides. So it seems like the silver is mainly interacting with the proteins, and the fluoride is interacting with the hydroxyapatite to create a product that's more resistant to acid dissolution than the tooth on its own. Silver diamine fluoride seems to penetrate at least two to 300 microns into dentin. It seems to go right through the curious, the infected part of the tooth, and then uh, about two to 300 microns into the affected part of the tooth. There's an odd thing that seems to happen, which is the lesion actually condenses a little bit as it arrests. And so in the microscopy that we've been doing, we see some actual tears within the dentin that oddly seem to not bother the patient at all. This is a slide from some of the work that we've been doing that shows how deep the silver is penetrating in. So on the left, you see a cut of the tooth where the left-hand side is the unaffected tooth structure, the dentin, and on the right-hand side is the, is the schmutz, is the really uh, bacterially infected part of the dentin, and the affected part is in between. What you see on the right is that the, the green is the silver. So wherever there's bacteria, there's a ton of silver that goes right there. The blue is calcium to give you the context. And in the in-between area, the affected area, silver is penetrating well into that region and is not as dense as where the bacteria is. Now we're able to see a little bit of, of silver going further into the affected portion, but only a little bit, and probably only into the tubules. So this is an image of actually the dentinal tubules where that bright white part that's lighting up is the silver, as verified by electron density microscopy. So to summarize how silver diamine fluoride works, it is a potent antimicrobial it prevents bacterial growth and deactivates the proteins that break down dentin. It remineralizes the dentin lesions, increases lesion hardness, and prevents demineralization. And it occludes dentinal tubules and penetrates far into dentin. So the indications for use that we generated as a committee uh, include and are not limited to the following. Extreme caries risk, so this includes xerostomia and severe early childhood caries. Behavior or medical management challenges, so this can include children and adults with dental fear, patients with exceptional needs, and those with advanced systemic medical conditions, especially who could not be treated safely in an OR setting under general anesthesia. The next indication is more lesions than treatable in one visit. And so in the setting of dental schools as an example, this could allow for the disease process to be drastically slowed and or halted while treatment planning and moving through treatment.
for difficult to treat carious lesions. So this could include lesions on the distal margins of crowns or furcation caries. And lastly, patients without access to care. So in the setting of mission trips as an example where treatment with sealants would ideally require monitoring for recurrent decay, silver diamine fluoride requires no monitoring and is roughly 1 20th the cost. So how much do you use? You are using microliters per lesion. One drop can treat five plus lesions. And to also give clinical context, I don't think either Jeremy or I have used more than two drops, and this can be in treating rampant caries throughout the entire mouth. So very little is needed. And how much can you use? So we went through the math with all of the data that was submitted to the FDA to look at safety from the animal trials that were done. And this is a long way of explaining that we came to the conclusion that one drop for 10 kilograms of body weight of a patient per visit gives us a 500-fold safety margin. Now in dentistry, we're really trying to not kill anybody. These are just teeth after all. We felt very safe in recommending one drop for 10 kilograms of body weight per visit. Now, a clinician may know that if they use two drops, that's a 250-fold safety margin. But what we ask you to remember is that we're saying per 10 kilograms of body weight. So for a 20-kilogram child, that would be two drops would give you a 500-fold safety margin. So you really can use a drop or more in an adult very easily and be extremely safe. And in small children, we would suggest that if it's a 15-month-old and therefore on average would be about 10 kilograms, consider if you really need to use another drop, consider coming back a different day. Now, how long do you wait? In figuring out the protocol, we've looked at the reaction of silver diamine fluoride with hydroxyapatite, and it turns out that to go from the beginning, where there's no reaction, to the reaction's completion, it takes about 70 seconds. So we've thought that we should protect that reaction for about a minute, if possible. And different people do this different ways. Some people put varnish on the top after they've treated with silver diamine fluoride. Some people use Vaseline. We're suggesting just to wait a minute. The protocol that we generated is as follows. Regular personal protective equipment and plastic lined covers. This is very important as silver diamine fluoride stains clinic surfaces and clothes permanently. So we cannot stress this enough because initially if a drop is spilled and you don't see it turn black right away, you'll come back in a few hours and have permanent black spots on the clinic surfaces. PPE, cotton isolation, air drying of the lesion, optional light Vaseline to gingiva. Again, this is in extremely rare situations where there might be an ulcerative process and there is a cervical lesion that you're applying silver diamine fluoride to. Four applied lesions with micro sponge, one minute dry time, rinse with water, and dispose of everything in plastic bags. Again, that's to protect the clinic surfaces. Okay, so in summary, how do we use this? We isolate, dry, 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 and apply. So this is our video showing you how to use silver diamine fluoride using our protocol. You start by applying one drop into a plastic dapping dish, just like so anticipating that your gloves will stain everything. I'm going to pre-bend our micro brush and then apply the drop to our friendly patient. Okay, if I lean you back? Yes. You want to hold it for us? Mm -hmm. oh, thank you so much. So we're going to take some cotton and isolate the area. We're going to be applying onto number 30, a fusel, first permanent molar. So we have our air water syringe. Make sure that you're just getting air. Apply air until the tooth is nice and dry. And we're going to get our silver diamine fluoride. If you don't mind looking at the micro brush, we're going to Get the drop, remove excess on the side of the daffin dish. Bring this over to the patient. Open real big. Thank you so much. Apply to the affected area. You can see there's a little pit in the occlusal. 
That's it. And now we're going to let this sit for a whole minute. And then we will rinse. Look at the clock. Okay, so that was our full minute. I'm going to come back here. We're going to use the cotton that we used to isolate to soak up any excess silver fluoride in the area. And then we will rinse. Let's use the saliva ejector and some water. And that's it. So lastly, I'd just like you to see that we have a plastic lined tray cover, so the silver stain, which you can see the brush is already starting to stain, that it doesn't get onto our counter surfaces. We like to take the materials and wrap them up in our gloves, like so, to decrease the chance of stain. And then we throw everything away. Easy as pie. Now, how often should you apply it? So it needs to be reapplied. We can't emphasize this enough. Looking at the same clinical trial data we showed you earlier, if you don't reapply, the cavities seem to reactivate with time. What we don't know is when you can stop applying. One would hope that after a certain time of applying, you can just stop and that the lesion will stay deactivated, that it'll stay arrested. What we see is that if you continue applying with time, more and more cavities get arrested, but not 100%. So it needs to be applied at least once per year. We suggest twice per year or more often, depending on caries risk, two carious lesions without excavation. So no need to scoop out any of the cavity, just toothbrush or whatever you use to clean it, perhaps just air, and at least for the first two years. We see marked increase in caries arrest after the one year point. How safe is this material? So there's no adverse reports in over 60 years of use in Japan and monitoring by their government. Hypothetically, a silver allergy would obviously be a contraindication per the silver that's in silver diamine fluoride. We searched the medical literature and we're not able to find a single report of a silver allergy. We have had patients say that they have a silver allergy and on further conversation found out that it's actually a nickel allergy. There's no nickel in this material. So a relative contraindication would be any ulcer that's in the mouth. If the mucosa or gingiva is open, this stuff will sting if it gets on there. One opportunity is to simply put petroleum jelly, like Vaseline, over that area and apply that day. Or, of course, if there's some severe mucositis going on, consider applying at a different time. The side effect really is that it stains the lesion black. You can expect that that cavity that you treat with silver diamine fluoride will turn black over the next week. And in some studies, small white mucosal lesions were observed. This is a lot like a bleach burn. From doing endodontics, sometimes some of us have gotten some bleach on the gingiva and it doesn't hurt, but it gets that superficial layer of epithelium to come off and so you see a little white area there. That disappears within 48 hours and, and doesn't hurt. If this stuff gets on the tongue, it stings a little bit and doesn't taste very good. So in terms of safety, specifically fluoride, is in silver diamine fluoride, like we said earlier, and silver and ammonia. So this is the highest concentration fluoride product that we know of. It's about twice the concentration of fluoride as what's in fluoride varnish. Now we believe that the very small volumes of silver diamine fluoride that we use mean that they're overall there's a lower dosage of fluoride when you use silver diamine fluoride. We think that fluoride varnish and silver diamine fluoride are very safe because they are acute exposures to fluoride rather than the chronic exposures that have known consequences. Some of those known consequences are of course fluorosis and we just don't see that with acute exposures. Part of this we know from the anesthesia literature when they switched over from IV anesthetics to gas inhalation anesthetics that have fluoride like sevoflurane and desflurane and all of those that they didn't see any change in side effects of general anesthesia. So again, we think that these acute exposures to fluoride are safe. Now, silver has been completely cleared for any negative physiologic effects from the Environmental Protection Agency and the CDC. If you eat enough silver, and some folks that drink colloidal silver every day for years and years and years uh, have this happen, is that they will turn blue. And so we don't want to make any Smurfs. Smurfs are cute, but we don't want our patients to be Smurfs. We looked at the Environmental Protection Agency's recommendation of no more than one gram per lifetime, and it turns out that if we were to use enough to apply silver diamine fluoride to three teeth each time, you could do over 1,200 treatments in a person's lifetime, being very safe of not turning them blue. 
And so what that leaves is really the ammonia. And so just like in household cleaning products, ammonia is a little bit caustic, and that's why we want to be careful. But there's no other known physiologic side effects. Back to the side effects, the main side effect is really that silver diamine fluoride will turn cavities black. And so you can see in these pictures that if you look closely, a lesion that is yellow or brown will turn black. The healthy enamel stays pearly white, and the curious enamel in dentin turns black. So your patient should know this. We recommend showing some pictures before you do it. And so you can see on the bottom in particular that a carefully treated lesion immediately afterwards has no color change that's on the far left there. And a day later, it'll start to turn brown and a week later, it will be black. Now, if you, again, if you carefully treat the lesion and don't get it on other teeth, a lesion that's just one tooth away doesn't change color because we didn't get it on that tooth. Now, what we've seen in our uh, coming up on a year of use in the dental school at University of California, San Francisco, is that if you do apply it to composite margins, intentionally or unintentionally, they will stain. And so what we found is that most composite margins have some kind of leakage after a while and will soak up silver and turn black. <laughs> so. Be careful of how you apply it and do warn your patients ahead of time that this can stain. It will stain the lesion and nearby uh, restoration margins can be stained. So silver diamine fluoride will stain clinic surfaces and close permanently. So it's extremely important to take great care and caution when using this. There's a short period of time for which it will come out before having set with high pH solvents such as ammonia, but once it sets, it stains. It will only temporarily stain the skin without harm, the duration of time for which varies. So staining on the hand might last for a week, whereas staining on the lips could last for roughly three days given the higher turnover of skin cells. And so we put together as a committee a informed consent document uh, you can freely access this on the California Dental Association Journal website, and we'd be happy to send you the Word document so you can just change uh, the title to include your clinic. But it's at the eighth grade reading level and goes over all the important points that we've covered here today for your patients. So silver diamine fluoride under a restoration. In terms of same-day silver diamine fluoride application and restorative treatment, the evidence shows that there are no effects on bonding with the following protocol. Silver diamine fluoride placement, one minute wait time, rinse, and then edge bond restore as per usual. Um, the exception to change in protocol is if you are using resin-based cement in delivering a crown, we recommend excavating the SDF stained dentin prior to making the final impression, as research shows a roughly 33% decrease in bond strength if this is not done. So as Eleni was saying, there's really no dramatic effect on bond strength. These data show that whether you use self-etch or full-etch, as long as you proceed through your normal bond technique after the silver diamine fluoride, there's no effect on bond strength with composite resin. And then here with glass ionomer. So this is an older study where they used four different types of glass ionomer and looked after a day or after a month and there was no effect on bond strength. In another study, they showed that using etch seemed to, to do the trick, that if you etch after silver diamine fluoride, that you gain all the bond strength that you lost back to the point of using a, what you would normally use as a conditioner. And so we're gonna share just briefly about combining uh, with restorative materials. And so here you can see an amalgam on tooth 14 upper first molar, and a silver diamine fluoride and then glass anomer cement, a resin modified glass anomer on tooth 15, the second upper molar. And you can see they look pretty much the same, being that silver diamine fluoride will completely stain anything that has resin in it. And so we are calling this the silver modified atraumatic restorative technique, ART, or silver modified ART means SMART, which is using partial caries excavation and then silver diamine fluoride and then glass anomer cement. And so this has been increasingly adopted uh, across the country and elsewhere. And the protocol is simply uh, when you have a lesion that you can access or gain access by limited operative technique, you clean the lesion as you would, leaving caries at the bottom of the lesion, focusing on cleaning the margins, and then silver diamine fluoride and glass anomer cement as you would normally do. And what we see uh, in terms of coloring is that if it has resin so that you could light cure it, the entire 
restoration will turn dark, and so it just looks like an amalgam. Uh, but we don't have to use local anesthetic, and they seem to last very well over time. So playing with colors, what we see is with the pure glass ionomer, the body of the restoration doesn't change color, but you get a halo effect on the margins where that picks up the silver. Clinicians everywhere are starting to adopt uh, these techniques of combining silver diamine fluoride with glass ionomer cement of one type or another so that they can do a no excavation or minimal excavation treatment uh, in an attempt to avoid general anesthesia, sedation, and uh, restraint that are so commonly used, in particular in pediatric dentistry. And so what you see with this little kiddo at the end is that, um, that they use silver diamine fluoride three separate times until they assured a rest, so that was three times in two weeks. Uh, and then on a separate day, when they did not place silver diamine fluoride, since they had already arrested the lesions, then they put in an opaque resin-modified glass ionomer. And so in this 18-month-old kid, he was able to get reasonably aesthetic results and his caries lesions uh, stopped and treated uh, from multiple visits, uh, but without any local anesthetic, general anesthesia, or the other means that are usually taken to achieve dentistry in little kids. So in terms of how this affects the caries balance and the caries management by risk assessment, this is a simplistic view of pathological factors being on one side of the balance and protective factors being on the other of the caries balance. And so, of course, if there's more saliva and more fluoride antimicrobials in an effective diet, you're at less risk for cavities. And if there's pathological factors, such as the bad bacteria, poor dietary habits, and an absence of saliva, then you're more likely to get caries. And so what we think of, of Cambra is basically that the folks that have a higher risk need more. The folks that have a lower risk of caries need less. So how we apply silver diamine fluoride is basically that we increase the dosage by increasing the frequency for folks that have a worse caries risk and less frequency for folks that have higher caries risk. And so silver diamine fluoride should be used for prevention by risk. So we talked about treating caries lesions directly uh, to stop those lesions and thereby decrease the incidence of caries or prevent caries in the untreated surfaces. But when using it primarily for prevention, so on the first molars of kids or on exposed root surfaces in older adults, um, it should be done so by risk. So higher risk folks should get silver diamine fluoride uh, at least as an option on those high risk surfaces, whereas low risk patients don't need this treatment. It is one option for treating and preventing dental caries amongst other options uh, that are available to this these days. Uh, it should be used as an integrative strategy to lower risk factors and raise uh, protective factors. And one thing that's pretty cool is that uh, by the lesion turning black and hardening, uh, we're able to track the success of silver diamine fluoride, which also tracks the success of our overall caries management program. As a side note, in the dental school, it's been fun because it's the perfect caries indicator. And so our dental students can just uh, find wherever the black is and that's where the caries are. So frequently asked questions, how quickly does it work? Well, so based on the study in children that we showed you, uh, after two weeks, three quarters of those lesions are arrested. So it seems to work within two weeks and it needs reapplication to maintain with time. The color change occurs uh, at first within 24 hours and then completes by a week. The color change is permanent unless we drill out the lesion. We often get asked, why does the package insert state use over the age of 21 and limited to five sites? And that's what the FDA recommended for treatment of hypersensitivity. So that's why uh, studies are being done in children in the United States to look at uh, safety very carefully so that in future FDA evaluations, they could consider use in children. And so again, that's the same as fluoride varnish. Okay, and our take home messages are the following. Silver diamine fluoride arrests greater than 90% of caries when used twice or more per year. There is powerful indirect prevention, um, and again, that is application to caries lesions only, prevents cavities and other teeth. Um, remember to dry, dry, dry the lesion before application, and that silver diamine fluoride will stain everything. <laughs> So take great care with that. Um, so in summary, we are excited to have shared this with you and that this is another tool for our toolbox. It's safe, effective, painless, and inexpensive. And it has great implications in terms of being able to improve the quality of care and access to care.